copyright clicky. The definition is the administrative right given. I can't read that fast, but basically, if you make a song, dance, movie, video, poem, anything artistic, no fear because you are protected. So, here's some things that you can copyright. You can copyright an idea, but not a title. You can violate some copyright laws if you use it for education, sort of. Uh, you can do this under a statutory license for education, so that's cool, but rich people want to be rich for a long time, so you also can't copy enough of an idea to take away value. Copyright used to last 14 years, but that was pretty short, so now it's a lifetime, plus 70 years, and rich people are definitely happier now, because that could be 170 years, so there's some information on copyright. Uh, you're welcome. Hi, I'm Ben Clendenin, and I'm going to talk about the importance of audio levels. Keeping audio at quality levels is vital for television and radio. If the levels are too high, the audio will sound very loud and sound poppy. Keeping audio levels in the green will keep the sound at an audible level. Hello there, this is Ben Slack. And, you know, I figured that since the big semester review slash state test is coming, I figured I'd give you a little review on the microphone types. The one I am holding right now is a handheld mic, and it is used for, well, pretty much anything. You, you see a lot of people who are recording outside of the news, you know, like outside a building or something, and they're holding a handheld mic. And um, sometimes you might even see them in the water's room. <laughs> um, let's see what else is there. Oh, a shotgun microphone, and uh, I don't have it with me at the moment, but a shotgun microphone, when using it, must be pointed directly at the target or person that is being used for, or, you know, whoever wants to speak in it. And lastly is, oh, here's, here's something right here. Oh, not mean to do that. Anyway, over here we got here is called the Lavalier mic, and it is used for, um, it's mostly used when people want to read the news um, or something. It's used a lot when we do the student news. And um, as you can see, it looks small, and it is very small, and, um, but it's very powerful. And um, that's all I got for you on microphone types. Good luck on the test. See those cars down there? They have brands. We can't use them. We can't show the footage and zoom in like George did. That's due to copyright law. That's somebody's content, somebody's privacy. Same with a locker for hens. You can't use this. You can't make this yours due to copyright law because you have your certain standards and certain laws that will, if you violate, will cost you fines and will cost you even jail time. This is due to copyright law and these, play, these are in place to make sure that no one can see your content that you so heartfully and carefully make over the years. Okay. The fuse lighting is where you soften the glow of a glow of a light from a light source like this one to where that to where that were shiny human it, it will not cause them to glow. The light behind, the light right here is currently on the fuse. However, if I flip the cable over it's now the fuse. I've now softened the, the light from it so that it, if we're inside a human, it will not make them glow. Hi, I'm Colin Clavis, and I'll be talking to you about what a technical director does. A technical director's job is to switch cameras during a recording. The cameras switch onto the TriCaster. To switch cameras, the technical director pushes the appropriate number camera and then clicks auto to fade the camera. He then pushes take if he wants to directly switch to the camera with a cut. Hi, I'm Colin Quivis and uh, you're watching Disney Channel. Framing. ECU is the detail of the body. CU is the head. MS is the waist up. WS is the whole body. EWS, far away. Thanks for listening. Hello there, Mr. Waters. I'm George Tracy. You already know that. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between producers and executive producers. But first, I'm going to use a little analogy. So, uh, 
take a look at this poster here. Bullies have no friends besides their gangs. Don't be a bully. Now, that makes sense. That doesn't make sense because what they're saying here is that the only people that bullies can relate to are other bullies. This picture is very involved with bullying. Very involved. However, this one, not so much. Being left on red sucks. So does bullying. That's stupid and I hate it. You wanna know why? Because it's not involved. And neither are executive producers. Generally, they can be, not usually. Uh, but producers are typically more involved. Uh, they market the film, they uh, produce the film. Uh, they're very hands-on. Whereas executive producers, not so much. Hello everyone, I am Jacob Melanfon, and I am here to do some review on Color Temperature. But before we continue, I have something to explain. So, everyone knows that orange is hot and blue is cold. It just makes sense. Except, it's wrong. Your life is a lie. Because orange is cold and blue is hot. But, another thing is, when you are filming indoors, you want to have 3200K temperature for lighting. For outside, you need 5600K temperature. So there you go. I know I blew your mind, but now I'll help you for this year's test and get to it, get studying. Microphones are a type of transducer, a device which converts energy from one form to another. Microphones convert acoustical energy, sound waves, into electrical energy, which is the audio signal. And different types of microphones have different ways of converting energy. As you can see, this piece of equipment is our video switcher. There's three rows of buttons. The bottom row is called the preview bus. Anything you press on this when you switch will be taken up to the program bus. The program bus is the main bus. This is what's live. Above the program bus is the effects bus. This is for doing green screens or any other type of effects. To the immediate right is the fader bar. The fader bar lets you switch if you don't want to use the auto button or take button. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Primary colors are red, green, and blue. CMOS sensors convert light into video. Cameras can have one sensor for each primary color. Uh, for color temperature, you got white that is balanced, blue that is hot, and orange is cold. For outdoors, you got 5600K, and for indoors, you have 3200K. Critical focus is when you zoom in on the subject, zoom out, and then it should be focused. Everybody. Welcome to Matthew's Class of Cables. Today we'll be focusing on cables you'll be tested on during the state test. Let's review. First we have the XLR cable. Note the three holes in the top here and the fact that it's very, very wide. The XLR cable is usually used for microphones and of the such. Next we have the BNC cable. Note the ring around the cable. The ring around the cable is usually used for a specific connector as you can see, here. Note how it usually fits in perfectly fine, and it works perfectly. Now I'm going to talk about the HDMI cable. The HDMI cable is the universal cable of today. Everybody uses it, and it brings in higher image than the USB of yesterday. Notice the... Uh, Note the trapezoidal figure and the space right down the middle, as well as the prongs that are located very deep inside. Next we have the RCA. Now everybody knows this from their classic Wii system or Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 2. This is for audio and this is for visual. Basically, it's the universal wire that used to be the universal wire for audio and visual equipment. Next up, the mono wire. 
The monowire, otherwise known as the phone wire, is, no, is also known as the auxiliary cord. Note the rings around the end. Remember, one ring equals mono, two rings equals stereo. That's the kind of sound you'll be hearing from your aux cord. The aux cord is usually found on mini cables. And finally, we have the USB. Note the squareness and rectangularness of the connector. Note the fact that there is half of it being filled up with a hardware right inside. Note the space inside that connects into any USB port. Thank you very much everybody for listening. My name is Matthew Kitsunagos and this has been Matthew's Class of Cables. Hello CHS, this is Max Winsky and this is not Max Winsky's Hot Take of the Week. But I am Max Winsky and today we're going to talk about three point lighting. Okay, so we have the key light, which is the primary light, um, and it, um, it's the primary light, and it brings light directly to your subject. So whenever you are filming, the subject will be illuminated by the shot. As you can see, I'm being illuminated right now by these lights. Cameraman, will you please show the lights? Those are the lights. They're very bright. Okay, so next we have the fill light which fills the dark side of the subject. The fill light allows you to control the overall feel of your shot depending on how much you dim or light in the fill light. You know what I'm saying? So a dim light will give you more of a, of a harsh film, no, no, a harsh you know, type of shadow, while having the light brighter will help you give your subject an even more, oh, or a more even look, um, as you all know what I'm saying. And so you should always have a fill light into place, even if you want a shadowy look to your to your talent, so that you're able to see a, a little detail on the dark side. And as you can see, we have um, the fill lights, which are over there. Yeah. The last light in in the three point lighting system are the back lights. Um, those are the back lights. They're not on right now because sadly we're not filming um, a hot take, but it's coming soon. Um, and so the third light is the back light, and a back light will put another element to the uh, image of your talent and will push him or her, you know, it could be her, off from the background, again, adding another dimension. And for this, you're gonna need to place a light behind your subject. So as you can see, they're behind them. And it's gonna be pointed at the back of their neck, right here, that's where they're coming down. And it has to be high enough to be out of frame, which it is, Mr. Waters did a good job of putting those way above the frame. And you, you have to watch that you don't have light too bright or uh, the effect, yeah, the effect you get may not be what you're looking for. Happen. So that's it. See you guys. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Cram here to talk to you guys about cables and connectors. Today I'm going to teach you about some of the basic connectors that we use here in this TV studio. This is an HDMI cord. Many people use these when they go on their laptops, to record on mice, 
normalize to have the strings attached or even phone cords such as this one in my hand. The next chord I'll be talking to you about is a mini or a phone cord. They are only one eighth to one fourth of an inch, with two stripes being in the stereo and one stripe meaning it's a mono. This one here has two stripes as you can see. Well, you can't really see all that well, but it has two stripes. The next one on our list is an RCA chord. Now commonly these are three colors. White, red, and then there's normally a yellow one as well, but this one does not have that add-on to it. The next chord I have for you all is our BNC chord. As you can tell, it's a co it looks like a coax cable. Now, the main thing about this chord is it is technically coax, but this piece right here, as you can see, is what makes it is what needs to be used in order for it to be viable for its TV studio purposes. The next one for you all to learn about is the XLR. XLR. This one is plugged into these devices right here, in order, in, which are connected to the microphones, which allows people here in the TV studio to communicate with the people over here in the control room whenever we do video announcements and other projects. And the final chord I have for all of you today is the HDMI chord. Now, this chord's name means High Definition Multi-Interface. Many uh, systems that you plug into your TVs at home, whether they be a cable box or a gaming system, use these in order for you to see the, uh, the video and to hear the audio from whatever you're playing or watching. And that's all I have for you today on this lesson. I hope you all do well on your test, and see you next time. Reporter. Breaking news: CHS Maximum DC YouTube channel Maximum Speed Maximum Speed Hot Take Division has almost reached 40 subscribers. It needs your help to reach 100 subscribers by the end of the year. Help and become part of the mission. Oh my God! I just got these papers from my assignment desk editor. Let's look at what they have to say. It says. Max Winsky's Hot Take of the Week voted best YouTube channel in the world. It says that Max Winsky and his team are invited to the YAW YouTube Award for the World Awards. They will be going this November. If you want to go, contact Max Winsky or any member of his team. This is very important. I'm glad that I had my assignment desk editor to give this to me, or else I wouldn't have known about it. So get on YouTube, search up Max Wincy's Hot Take of the Week, and subscribe. Please, for the love of God, subscribe. There are six type of mic pickup patterns. Omnidirectional, cardoid, hypercardoid, supercardoid, loiber, and bi-directional. Omnidirectional mic microphones have a pickup pattern that captures sound in all directions equally. Cardoid mics are the first in the directional microphone category with an inverse heart shaped pickup pattern. Hypercardoid microphones are much more directional than cardoid and are used in the interior locations when a microphone can be placed close to the actors. Shotgun microphones are tube-shaped interference mics that use ridges along the side of the microphone to shape the pickup pattern into a very narrow shape. Bidirectional microphones, by their very design, feature 
a figure of eight patterns that pick up sound equally well on either side, while rejecting sounds to the side. A lobar polar pattern is used with a shotgun microphone, and the direction is very, very narrow. Thank you for watching. In TV, scripts are your written out documents of what you will say or do once the camera is rolling. Scripts will generally cover every movement and word you say. They are mostly useful for when you have a lot to say and need to practice to remember, or if you are covering a news package you aren't too informed on. Scripts are useful to write out all the necessary information. Storyboards, on the other hand, are drawn out pictures of a frame by frame illustration that outlines what you are going to say or do. These aren't commonly used, but are useful for video projects where you need to map out movements from scene to scene, or in cases where a script would be confusing for camera movements. Hello, I'm Ryan Toe, and for this review, I have parts of the camera. First, we're going to start off with the lens. The lens is a glass changes, which is right here, that changes the way the image looks. Next, we have the aperture. The aperture is right here, the opening of the camera. And for the iris, which is next, is the thing that lets the light in or out. The CMOS on the camera is what converts light to the video. Lastly, we have the viewfinder. The viewfinder is what displays the image, which would be right here. Hope we learned about the parts of the camera. Chroma key is another term for green screen, blue also common. Can replace a single color with another source, video or photo. Lighting should be as even as possible so multiple colors cannot be recorded in the background.